we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 3. I will read the whole of the passage again, our text. John 3, 1 to 8. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, and for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, he must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. We analyzed why we actually need to be born again and we discovered in the morning that the man that god created to look like himself in his own image after his own likeness that man passed through a stage of fall and when that man fell there was the need for another plan made by god to restore man back to his position uh, this evening I want us to look at this word, born again. You must be born again. That is what we are going to consider this evening. You must be born again. In our African setting, let me just try to explain something to us. In our African setting, there is something we call Abiku. Do you know Abiku? Do you know Agbanje? Eh? Abiko is a demonic child that keeps coming to the world, but we never try to remain on earth. Meanwhile, let me quickly add this. Abiko is a demonic child. Christians don't give birth to Abiko. They don't give birth to Obanji because they are Holy Ghost filled. They can't give birth to that kind of children. Those who give birth to children like that are connected to the demonic world. Abiku, or as you may call it, Ogbanje, is a child under the manipulation of demonic powers. This child keeps coming, keeps coming. And in some cases, whenever it is time for the child to go, the child will go. Can I remember? Over 10 years ago, we were doing a Christmas, uh, okay, New Year uh, Eve service. And then a lady started screaming, Shelimo, Shelimo, Anumabia, Anumabia, Shelimo. I asked somebody, What is Shelimo? He said, Wait for me. What is Anumabia? He said, I'm coming. Uh, in this place, want to go? You will not go. So I met the cat kids there that uh, this lady that is manifesting that wants to leave us. And it was around to 12. This lady that wants to leave us, why don't we do something? So we had to take her to the vestry and do deliverance for her. And while we were praying for her, she was communicating with the people of the other world. 
and was telling them that I want to go. Later, she told me, as I followed her up, that she had a covenant that she must not enter that new year. If I tell you the parents that give birth to this lady, this girl, they had a shrine. No wonder they can give birth to a lady into a, 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 a demonic child like that. A child that was demonized. This abiku, when you give birth to this child, if you like, carry a razor blade and remove one of the fingers. That child, I mean the dead body, eh? Cut a part of it. Mutilate it. When the baby is given birth again, that part, the mark will still be there. For somebody to come into this world, somebody that is already alive, that person must die first. We are born just once. But this birth we are talking about is not the birth of a bhikkhu. It's not the death that you die physically and then you are buried. And it's not reincarnation. Reincarnation is demonic. It's not in our Christian dictionary. Hebrews 9 27, it is appointed unto man to die how many times? Once. And after that, what? After that, judgment. Forget about demons who take the form of a late person and go to Lagos or US or anywhere to start life again. Those people are demons. They are not human beings. If you even read your Bible very well, when Genesis chapter 6, when the Bible says the sons of God saw the daughters of men and took for themselves wives, those were demons. They were fallen angels who materialized, who put on human bodies and they went and polluted people. They are everywhere. They are all over the world. There are people who are no human beings. They are everywhere. And some will go and sleep with them and become demonized. That's not what we are treating today. This type of birth we are talking about is a spiritual one. If you look at the verse 8 of the passage we read, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nobody can understand the wind. We can't understand the way of the wind at all. We hear it. We see it moving particles. But we don't know exactly where it's coming from. We don't even know the destination. So the spiritual birth is something that is confusing to the carnal man. Why do we need to be born again? We were born of God before. We were created by God. For me to use the right word. We were created by God in his own image after his own likeness. But when sin came, the nature of man had to change. Let's open our Bible to so Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. It says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You have this word I underline in my Bible, and ye shall be as gods. Satan was not telling a lie. Satan was saying the truth. When he said, I have King James version here. My King James versions carry G-O, small letter G-O, D-S. And the Hebrew rendering is Elohim. He said, ye shall be as gods. What is gods? Small, small gods. Eh? Satan said, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall be like me. You will not carry my nature. And sin, S-I-N, is Satan's inherited nature. So, when you commit sin, you carry the nature of Satan himself. And as at when man ate the fruit, his nature changed. How? Immediately, he now discovered that he had been naked all this while. But because the glory of God was covering his nakedness, man couldn't know. But when his nature changed, 
Man now realized that he had been naked all this while. That is one of the reasons God saw that sin had come. And for the rest of the life of man, man had to continue to fight sin. And fight sin. Until Jesus will come and overcome sin. And even after overcoming sin, man will continue to fight sin till he leaves this, this world. So God quickly had to slaughter innocent animals and so close for them. The first cloth man put on was sold by who? Who is the first tailor so far? God. If you are a tailor, yeah? If you are not sewing the type of clothes that God said they should sew for people, eh? the type of clothes God said they should sew for people, you are not sewing those ones, you are on your own. That one was a garment. If the ones you are sewing for people don't look like Christian, you say you, it's your money you need, it's your money you need. You are like somebody who says, in their hand, in their hand, you don't smoke. But you sell it. I used to know a pastor's wife. In fact, till today she sells cigarettes. Yes, and alcohol. She sells cigarettes and alcohol. Till today, a pastor's wife. The husband was a general overseer. If you are here, a pastor's wife, or you will get married to a pastor, don't turn the ministry of your husband upside down. Don't turn it upside down. And then, after that moment, that man sinned, the nature of man changed. There was the need for man to return back to God again. And the process was a spiritual one and a physical one. Jesus, how did Jesus came to restore that nature? First of all, Jesus came and became man. He came and he became man like us. In fact, the, net, the physical look of Jesus was not different from every other man. Ask me, how did I know? There was a time when they went to the garden of Gethsemane to catch him, to get hold of him. They did not know him. And they were confused. Okay, Judas, how do we even know the Christ you are talking about? We are talking about General Vasya. They did not know him. And he, the followers. Today, is it possible? Eh? I've seen a general of us here. If he's entering the church, everybody will lie down. Over the news, everybody will lie down. May God forgive that general of us here. Because we never lay down for Jesus, even. How much more a human being? Jesus came in the form of a man. He humbled himself and put up, he put on flesh. After seeing the glory of God in heaven, he had to try. He learned obedience and put on flesh and came in form of man. Do you know man? Eh? The name man. Became a disgrace after man fell. Sometimes me, I feel ashamed to call myself a pastor when I go out sometimes. I feel ashamed. Why? Because when you hear some of the things pastors do sometimes, many of these fake pastors, if you hear what they do, you will be ashamed. It can be shameful sometimes when you are in a company and then your church member, the member of your denomination, or a fellow Christian, do some kind of things. You will be ashamed to say, I am a Christian. But we will not be ashamed. We will continue to identify with Christ. So if I want to disgrace this ministry that the Lord has given to us Christians, that person is disgracing himself. That's the truth. So Jesus, even upon that shame that was associated with the flesh, Jesus put on flesh and came because he wanted to save man from that sinful nation. 
and then the only way to save was to pay. How was it to pay? Was to die. And he quickly gave his life. And he died. After pain, his blood washed away our sins. I had a dream a few weeks back. In this dream, it was like I was watching a television. You know how a dream looks like sometimes. Sometimes you can't even be in the television you are watching. So it was like that. I was watching a television. Before I knew it, I was already in the television doing the what I was watching. So I became a part of the, the casting. I, as I was watching, Jesus was crucified. As he immediately he died, I saw myself in the temple in Jerusalem. He entered the temple with a kind of wind. And immediately he entered, he did not say anything. There was nobody in the church except me. He entered the temple and went to the altar and split the curtain open. The curtain that covered the altar, that separated the holies of holy from where the people worship, the curtain split open. Giving me an assurance that I have opened it. Every man now has access to God. You can assess God through the blood of Christ. Then, this is the principle. I have come to give you life. The way you must have this life is to be born again. How do you become born again? We are born again of three things. You must be born again of the water, the spirit, and of the word of God. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. I will do a little explanation. The baptism we experience today is just a ceremonial demonstration of what you have confessed with your mouth and the life you want to live from that moment. Sometimes when I hear radio preachers, TV preachers, when they say, hey, if you know, uh, you just listen to this message, say this prayer after me. And they say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. I am not your son. After that just commitment, they said, okay, now you are born again. Congratulations. You are not yet born again. That moment. That is when the work of your born again starts. We have a lot of born again in church today. But if you leave your daughter with them for three months, that daughter will become multiplication. If you leave your business with them for just two weeks, that your business will become minus. If you leave your company with them, that your company, the ownership will turn to substitution. No, that is not born again. Born again is not just water baptism. The understanding of born again today is two things. Are you baptized? Yes. That means I'm born again. Have you repeated a prayer after a preacher that Lord Jesus come into my heart any day? He said, yes, I've repeated it. Oh, congratulations. You are born again. One day I was watching one of these uh, uh, cable stations and about three young uh, youths were on the street with microphone. One of these popular uh, firebrand uh, Pentecostal denomination. They will ask anybody they meet, uh, brother, are you born again? Say yes. If the brother says no, they say, okay, repeat this prayer after me. After the repetition of this prayer, they will say, congratulations, you are born again. Is that true? I'm saying this because we have a lot of people who say they are born again and we know that these people are not born again. We have a lot of people who say, I am saved. I'm flying to heaven. My pastor told me, I'm saved. I'm doing well. I'm flying to heaven. How do you even know you are saved? And we have a lot of preachers who are not saved but guarantee the salvation of others. 
How can somebody that is blind tell you that he wants to lead you and you are happy? You go to a man of God and say, eh, please, oh, uh, the man that is coming for me, for my hand in marriage, said I must sleep with him first. He said, is that the problem? He said, yes. So when I, what are you here for? He said, as a matter of fact, I want you to cast him. He said, well, um, how long have you been together? Did he promise to marry? He said, yes. Well, if you see him, that he will leave you alone. Just do it. After all, you are together. And a young man was telling me a few days ago that the guest, I told him, stop living in sin. You can't be enjoying and sleeping with somebody, live in the same house with somebody you are not married to. You are a thief. And he told me, do you know a man of God has blessed us? I said, did you try? He said, I told the man that he, the girl, the lady is my fiancée. And he blessed both of you. Bless both of you in sin. Is that a good blessing? Eh? To be born again, first of all, you can't skip this primary stage of repentance. Repentance is not by one so far. What is repentance? It's a change of heart. It's realizing your spiritual poverty and saying, I am tired of living like this every day. I want to follow Jesus. And then that person resolves in his or her mind and says, Today, I have resolved to follow you, Jesus. I don't want to live this old life. That follows, that is followed by your confession. After believing with your heart, you confess with your mouth and you are saved. That is just still a process of salvation. It's not complete yet. You have to go and be baptized. The word baptism is from the root word baptism, which means barrier, internment, barrier. If you say, I want to be baptized, you are equally saying, I want to do my barrier. I want to do my barrier. What are you burying? Your old lifestyle. Just as Jesus died and was buried and he resurrected, you want to say, I have resolved to die to the things of this world. Sack all these girlfriends. Sack all these, poor, these people I'm doing illegal business with. I want to live for Christ alone. And then the priest dips you into the water. That now that you say you have died with Christ, let me dip you into the water. Let me bury you. They bury you and they bring you out. That is water baptism. Born again of the water. That is the physical aspect of it. The spiritual aspect of being born again by the water is being cleansed by pure water from heaven. The water that flows from the throne of God and from the throne of the Lamb. In Revelation, you are washed by that pure water. You are purified. From every faith that may have stained you. And then the baptism of the spirit. You have another bap uh, uh, born again. Being born of the spirit has to, do the, has to do with the work of regeneration. The spirit, because you are a spirit, you are not just a human being. You are a spirit. The soul of God. The, the soul that came from God is in you. That spirit gives birth to you again. If it is baptism alone and your confession, you are not yet born again. So, you are born of the Spirit. The Bible says, he that joins himself to a prostitute becomes one flesh with that prostitute. But he that joins himself to the Lord becomes one spirit with the Lord. If you have repented and you are filled with the anointing of the Lord, you cannot separate your spirit from the spirit of God living inside of you. Both of you become one. Just one. One spirit. You become one spirit with the Lord. And then, being born of the world. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, 
but of it corruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You are born of the word. How are people born of the word? Each time you hear the word of God, the word of God, the Bible says, certify that by the truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17. As you hear the word of God, the word of God has a way of purifying you. Changing you. I was in a keke one day and I was reading my Bible in a keke. As I was, somebody was getting me irritated, getting my, my anger irritated. And then as I was reading, I read, love endures all things. Love endures all things. I asked myself, do I have the Holy Spirit? Do I have love in myself? If I have love, why can't I endure this person? It was a battle. I told myself, if I have the Spirit of God, and I have the fruit of the Spirit, I have love inside of me, then I must endure all things. This is how God does his work. There are some of us who don't want to hear the truth. Don't want to hear the truth. But I tell you, me, myself, there are preachers I listen to. Not God bless you, God bless you preachers. One of them, Paul Washer. There was a day I was listening to him preaching. I started crying. I was crying and weeping. I said, no, this can't be me. I can't remain in this level. Lord, do something in my life. And I cried. If I may ask you, when last did you cry in church? Eh? When last did you cry in church? Some people's hearts, Nakbomo, no word of God enters. If the preacher is preaching, not today with the era. If you are that type of person, the word of God is not giving birth to you. And can I tell you that the word of God gives birth to us every day? When the Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall meditate on it day and night. As you meditate on it, it smoothens and prepares your mindset for every action you want to take. The word of God has a way of changing us. Of changing us. If you are here and after your pastor finishes preaching, you go to him and insult him. Let me tell you, ask the men of God here. It's not everything we say on the pulpit that you plan to say. There are some things that God will definitely use you to say before you even know that you said it. That is how God works. And then if God is rebuking somebody else and, and it doesn't concern you, somebody, can a man will not pick offense. Why must you say this? Instead of being blessed by the word, the person ends up having the word as judgment against themselves. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.